Hi, this is document D for a Great Wall of China DBQ about the Silk Road trade. So far we've been talking about the Great Wall and whoops, and how it has um, protected China from the Xiongnu. Well, we change our focus a little bit on the role of the Great Wall today. So our target for today, this is a new target that you'll be evaluated on, explain how the economic goals, economic means like the things related to business and money. How did the economic goals of a nation, civilization, or empire impact the lives of its people or the decisions of its government and rule rulers? So how did the government of China, the emperors, make decisions based on business and money? And of course, we're still looking at were the costs of the Great Wall of China worth the benefits? Today we use a couple of our vocabulary words. The first one was import, which remember is the things that are bought from a different country. So glass was an import into China. And export is the goods that are sold to a different country. So silk was a major export from China. The other word you'll see in our document today is caravan. Remember that's a group of people traveling together for safety. Often they travel with camels, not always. Um, but people traveled in a caravan from China to India when they used the Silk Road. So, are we dealing with a primary or secondary source? Let's see, we have two sources actually. So we have this chart, the Silk Road trade. So looking at it, it says the exports and imports, and then it lists them. And it says the sort source is it was created from various sources, which means the DBQ authors created it. So were the DBQ people who created this DBQ in 2011, were they there when the Great Wall of China was built? Hmm. So let's see, is that primary or secondary? And then the second one source is this one from Tim McNeese, The Great Wall of China from Lucent Books, published in 1997. So 1997, was that when the Great Wall of China was being built? I'm going to say probably not. Oh, once again, I got the wrong slide. So this one we are looking at is a secondary source. We'll get to the cost-benefit analysis here in a little while. First, let's go ahead and look at these two. And I do need these notes now, finally. So both the chart and the paragraph are secondary sources. The Han made peace with the Zhongnu and all these. These notes come from the paragraph. I'm going to go ahead and read that right now. We'll come back and look at this chart in a little bit, but let's go ahead and start with the paragraph. The Han era began like most other periods in Chinese history with warfare. Wu Di, the sixth emperor of the Han dynasty, established peaceful relations with the nomadic Zhongnu people of the north only after conquering them. Hmm, so conquering means that he, you know, he won a war against them. And after he'd won, then he made peace with them. But once this had been accomplished, the Wu, Wu Di used the wall to aid or help in expanding China's influence in the world through trade with other nations. Hmm, this is a key sentence here. He wanted to expand China's influence in the world through trade. He he, Wu Di, extended the wall 300 miles to the west and added a chain of watchtowers beyond the wall's end. The wall and watchtowers followed the famed Silk Road that served as China's link to trade with the west. Wu Di assigned thousands of soldiers to the wall outposts and watchtowers to protect the merchants and caravans traveling along the trade routes. So we have a new purpose for the wall. Originally, it's to fight against the Zhongnu, right, to keep them out of China. But here at the beginning, it says, well, they conquered them and they established, made peace. And then the wall has a new purpose, to protect merchants and caravans. So how is it that the business and the money... Yeah, Wu Di and the people of China are wanting the money, they're wanting to trade, they're wanting that business. How is that affecting what they do then? What does he do? It says here, 
right here in the middle he extended the wall and that kind of thing so extended means added on to it made it longer all right so you should have been able to get from that the notes here now what items the chinese people sell to the rest of the world what ideas were brought to china imported and what goods were imported so this is the exports and the imports so looking at the document um, so we have the exports glazed dishware is one you might not know what that is so glazed dishware is um, what we normally would call china you might have heard of something called china um, that's what my grandma called expensive ceramic dishes that were fancy so like she had a few tea cups and saucers that were very pretty that was the kind of dishware um, along those lines that's what we're thinking of with the glazed dishware so nice ceramic dishes spices pottery jade when you talk about jade jade is a green stone used in jewelry music bronze bronze is a metal that was used for jewelry as well tea and silk silk of course was fabric so those are things that China sold, right? They're exports going from China, follow the arrow. They're going to India, Central Asia, and Rome. And then India, Central Asia, and Rome are selling things back to China. And that does not include only the things that are goods, but some ideas. So think through each of these. Which of these could you not carry out of a store with you? If you can't carry it out of a store as a, an object you can pick up and carry, then it's going to be an idea and not a good. Goods are the things that you can carry out of a store. So Buddhism, can you carry that out of a store? Is that a good or an idea? Ermine fur. So ermine fur, this is a, a fancy fur that would be used to make fur clothing. Um, could be black or white depending on what it was glassware so that's just things made out of glass that was a new technology in ancient world rome was one of the first ones to figure it out rhinoceros horn for medicines so can you carry a piece of glass something made out of glass can you carry a rhinoceros horn can you carry some fur let's see if you remember if you can carry them then they are goods they go under that goods one irrigation system we've talked about irrigation with mesopotamia and egypt remember that's getting water to the fields so the way the system you use for getting water to fields can you pick that up and carry it out of the store is that a good or an idea grapes you know what those are music now you might be able to pick up a cd or pick up something that has a recording of music on it you might have sheet music but those are all really things that music i would count more as an idea they would carry instruments which is more of a good so music is kind of crosses the border between a good and an idea but mostly i would call music an idea and then melons so think watermelons or cantaloupe um, any of those melons packed in snow in lead containers that would keep them nice and cold and crisp. Sounds pretty good right now. All right. So that is document D. Go ahead and finish up these questions. These last, so these three you should have gotten from what we just talked about, whether it's an idea or a good. And for why did Wu Di continue to expand the wall? That one should be there clear in your notes here. This one about his attitude. Okay. So Emperor Wudi, attitude, how does he want the rest of the world to think of China? What does he want the rest of the world to do with China? That's what we're talking about, attitude here. Is he trying to take over the rest of the world? Is he giving in to the rest of the world? Or is there something else going on? What is he trying to say? What is he wanting from the world? Or wanting to do with the world? Okay. So, look in here, Wu Di. Hmm. Wu Di used the wall to aid in expanding China's influence in the world through trade with other nations. What does that mean? 
When you get that finished, don't forget you also need to think of the costs that are listed in this document and the benefits that are listed in this document. And then you are ready to go on to document E.